to the first ghoul ready with me of 2024 you guys i am so sorry normally for those of you who are new to ghoul ready with me i have like six of them i start like mid-september but we're starting towards the end of october i'm so sorry guys like i just have had way too much going on this year but we're here now and we're getting spooky -ooky, okay um as i mentioned in the very end of my nomad video on friday uh, this week and next week is going to be all spook. All spook, no kook. Okay, so um, I apologize, but we're getting super spooky now. So like, does that work? I hope. I hope that works. Um, like I said, um, this video, Friday's video, and then next week, Monday and Friday will also be Ghoul Ready With Me's, along with a very special dramatic reading of an Edgar Allan Poe short story on Halloween. So tune in for that. And uh, yeah, those of you who are new to Ghoul Ready With Me, um, I basically just make up a spooky ooky story while doing some SFX makeup. And that's, that's what we're doing here. I might, it's very late. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So, without further ado, let's get spooky. Bethany kind of just always knew that she was going to be a mortician. It was kind of her family business. Her dad had done it. Her grandfather had done it. His father had done it. It's just, you know, something everyone knew. She was the first girl to do it, but that's just because there was a lot of men in the family. But knowing that she was born into it and knowing that if she had any questions, she had plenty of people there to help her. She wasn't, you know, afraid to just jump in and get it done, basically. There was no clap back from the townspeople saying that she wasn't doing it right or they didn't like the way that she you know presented their loved ones or anything like that everyone respected her trusted her and you know it was no big deal the town grew big enough that they needed more than just one family funeral home so her cousin had also kind of been interested in taking over the family business and he took the opportunity with a little seed money to start up his own mortuary. Now, some people might have thought that that would have caused some sort of contention or something, but they had always gotten along. It was not a big deal. And honestly, she just took it as more of a sign of, you know, good things for the town than anything else. And really, the only kind of odd thing that came out of it was uh, they quickly discovered that her cousin was kind of more interested in being more on, like, the cutting edge of things. Like, he wanted to try the newest technologies, all of that jazz. Um, whereas Bethany kind of took a more traditional approach. And, you know, everyone kind of appreciated that but also those that didn't care about what was really going on behind the scenes as long as the service went the way that they were wanting it and all of that uh you know they would go with bethany but if she was fully booked up they would go to her cousin not a big deal again there was no competition so bethany's cousin found himself kind of partnering with like bigger companies, uh, you know, partnering up with like tech companies that would kind of experiment with like embalming equipment and, you know, the few kind of somewhat sciencey things that go into preparing a corpse for a funeral. Um, they would kind of get involved in that. And he would partner up with them and, you know, they would send him 
new tools, new, you know, airbrushing equipment for the, you know, makeup of the corpse and stuff like that. Most of it was pretty, you know, normal, nothing too crazy. But then one day he got in a box and he wasn't really sure what was going on with this box. And he opened it up and it was some kind of new embalming fluid that promised to make your bodies, you know, have more of a youthful glow. There was special, you know, compounds within the fluid. It did, in fact, give a more youthful appearance. So, he messaged the company, got some more, and took some over to Bethany. It was like, hey, you know, I know you don't really go in for this sort of stuff, but you've got to try this. Like, they say it's supposed to give your corpses, like, a more youthful appearance and it honestly kind of does like you, you've got to try it out well she had just gotten in like an 80 year old woman so she's like huh okay sure but she humored him she took a box and she just kind of set it on a shelf and forgot about it you know she had plenty of embalming fluid already hooked up ready to go didn't really need it just kind of took it to humor him but eventually she did start kind of getting low on fluid so she was like well you know maybe I should hook that stuff up and give it a try I don't usually go in for his crazy experimental stuff but he seemed really impressed with it so why not give it a chance the person that she had just gotten in wasn't necessarily very old. Uh, she was actually late 20s. Unfortunately, was in a car accident. The girl didn't have a whole lot of years off of her life. So she didn't need a whole lot of help making her look young. But when she started pumping her full of the new embalming fluid, she did notice... <clears throat> a bit of a difference. So she texted her cousin was like, hey, you're not wrong. This stuff is great. But she left to, you know, go get lunch or whatever and then come back because it takes a while to, like, get all the embalming juice in there and let it settle and all that jazz. So she, you know, went, ran some errands, did some things, and then, you know, she came back and was kind of shocked because the body looked like it had actually come back to life a little bit. Like the skin looked juicy. It looked plump. It looked fresh. She had to laugh at herself because she kind of walked up to it a little hesitantly because she half expected her to sit up and say hello. Now, of course, the corpse didn't. It was fully dead. But that embalming fluid just really made it look lifelike. Well, they were having family dinner that weekend, so she met up with her cousin there, naturally, and was like, you know, I just can't get over how youthful that stuff makes them look. Like, I just, wow. Like, I usually don't go in for this sort of stuff, but like, you're really onto something with this company. And he's like, yeah, I know. I can't believe it either. He's like, but have you heard the news? And she said, no, what? And he's like, well, you know, I primarily, a lot of my customers use that cemetery out on a Maynard Drive. And she's like, yeah, a lot of mine do too. And she's like, well, there's been grave robbers. She said, what? And he's like, yeah, just heard that this morning. Uh, Sheriff went to investigate because someone went to go visit their loved one and uh, saw 
a couple of graves were just destroyed. Of course, everyone's jaws were wagging about who would desecrate someone's grave like that. Like, that's just so low. My cousin said, that's not even the worst of it. They think that they're hiding out in those woods behind the cemetery because they keep hearing some like weird noises coming from there at night. He said the weirdest thing is, they're not just stealing like jewelry off the corpses or anything like, you know, a normal grave robber would do. They're stealing the whole body. She said, what? And he's like, yeah, like the whole body is missing out of these graves. And she said, are they like old ones or are they like the newer ones? He's like, no, they're newer ones. They're people that I like just buried. And she said, well, that's really crazy. But also if they're hiding out in the woods, it makes sense because the ground's freshly dug. It's easier to get to. But still, like, who does that? And it wasn't until Bethany's 20-something-year-old girl's grave got robbed that Bethany was like, that's not in the Maynard Cemetery. Like, what is going on? Are they moving around? Things just weren't adding up. So she called her cousin and was like, hey, you know, one of my bodies just got dug up. And it wasn't over there in the Maynard Cemetery either. Like, it's kind of crazy. And he's like, well, where was your body at? Because there's only a couple of cemeteries. And she said, well, it's the one that's like not even anywhere close to Maynard. They had a family plot. And he's like, really? She said, yeah. But it's the same thing. They keep hearing weird stuff going on in the woods behind their house now. Well, unfortunately, during all of this, another death occurred. And the body was taken to Bethany's. But they asked her, like, can you just go ahead and embalm it and then just hold on to it for a few days for us till we figure out what in the world is going on? Because we don't really want to just bury this poor, you know, deceased person and then someone dig them right back up. Like, let's figure out what's going on and then, you know, we'll have the funeral and let everyone grieve and all that. So that was the plan was she's just gonna go ahead and embalm it and then give them a few days to figure out what was going on so she goes ahead she embalms once again just cannot get over how supple and just renewed that embalming fluid makes the skin look she didn't have a whole lot of holding cabinets, but she did have a few holding cabinets. So she went ahead after she embalmed the body, put it away, and uh, carried on. And she came in the next day. They still didn't have a clue what was going on. They couldn't catch anybody. And until they actually caught anybody, they didn't really want to risk putting anything in the ground. So they asked her to hold on to the body for a few more days. And she said, yeah, that's no problem. You know, got it refrigerated. It's embalmed. Everything's fine. It can, it can wait. She came into work the next day and she heard like a strange thumping sound. And it took her a while to figure out like what it was because it just... She thought maybe something was wrong with the air conditioning. Like, she had to kind of go through a list of things and figure out what was going on. She quickly realized that the sound was coming from the vault room. Where she stores the bodies. And of course, her first thought was a raccoon had broken in somehow or something. It's a small town. You know, they've got a lot of raccoons. It's not that outlandish to think that. So she peeked in there. She didn't see anything. There was no one in there. 
she had the keys. No one else could get in. There was no signs of breakage. So she just assumed it had to be some kind of small critter had gotten in. So she called animal control and just kind of waited in her office until she like told them to call her whenever they got there so she could come let them in. <clears throat> Keeping the doors locked just in case it tried to get out if someone came in or, you know, she didn't want a rabid raccoon to be in there and it bites somebody like, you know. Playing it safe was probably the smartest thing to do. Meanwhile, while she's waiting for them to show up, she kept hearing an occasional thumping or clanking in that room. And, you know, it was a little unnerving, but it wasn't super loud, nothing crazy. Like, she, again, just thought it's got to be some kind of small animal or something. So, phone finally rings. She thinks it's them. So she answers it, and it's her cousin. And he said, hey... Are you still using that embalming fluid that I gave you? She said, uh, yeah, yeah, I still got it hooked up. He said, okay, well, you need to unhook it. I just got an email from the company. Uh, they're, they're recalling it. There's, there's something wrong with it. Well, she couldn't imagine what could be wrong with it because she just has been having such a great experience with it. But she's like, okay, well... Man, it's kind of like my new favorite embalming fluid, but that's fine. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll unhook it. And he says, yeah, I already unhooked mine. It's kind of a bummer, but they wouldn't really say what was going on. But they also said, uh, give them your local, like, police department, emergency services, phone numbers immediately. And they'll tell them how to proceed. I wasn't sure how she felt about the sound of that. I mean tell them how to proceed with what what's going on no one was really giving them any information but she's like okay well did you tell them that we've both been using it and he's like yeah yeah um i already you know called sal at the police department and uh told him hey you know we've got this embalming fluid we've been using and there's a recall and they said to give them your guys's numbers so they could contact you and tell you how to proceed. I particularly like the sound of that. That sounded very ominous indeed. But what did she know? So she told her cousin, like, okay, well, I've got some kind of animal or something holed up in here. So I'm waiting for animal control to get here. Uh, just keep me informed on like what's going on with that whole embalming situation. Well, finally, Steve from Animal Control got there, and, uh, you know, she let him in, didn't lock the doors behind him, because he's obviously going to be going right back out with the raccoon or whatever it was, <clears throat> and then took him into the room. Whenever the authorities were told what to do by the embalming company, they rushed over there to see if everyone was okay, and the door was unlocked. There was signs of violence. But there wasn't a single soul in the building. But oddly enough, the most recent body that had been brought in that they were waiting to bury until they figured out who was stealing the bodies had also been stolen. The company finally admitted that the embalming fluid was somehow bringing bodies back to life. There were zombie outbreaks everywhere. Who knew trying to make people's loved ones still look alive could possibly start the zombie apocalypse that was this i hope you guys enjoyed this again it's gonna be spooky ooky for the next two weeks so get into it if you're not into it i'll see you in november love you bye